My name is Richard Pollins. My favourite colour is blue, navy blue. My favourite shade is navy blue. I'm a Spurs fan. My friends would say, I can be quite funny. I can be quite irritating. I think the things that irritate me you know, are plentiful. Um, I think millennials, um, jobs worths, people thinking they know more about my abilities to do something than I do. Traffic, when the bin men don't come. Forms, admin, the post. I really don't like getting letters in the post. I'm terrible at being tidy. I'm not very arty. I think my favorite place is home. I'd like to start by making an assumption to the parents in the room. And the assumption is this, that just before you became parents for the first time, if you were going to travel, you've traveled. If you were going to study, you've studied. If you, your job, your career path is reasonably well set. Your friendship group is even quite settled, but now, now you're having a baby. And you know about babies, you've seen them on television. <laughs> But the main thing is you know that your life is going to be different. You're going to need to make changes and learn things at a time when you haven't really had to learn anything for a while. And that was the same for us, but with one significant parallel. I am disabled. I was born without legs. And I've learned, had to learn a lot through the years. When I was very young, I learned to use artificial legs for the first time. When I was slightly older, I learned how to do stairs. When I was 13, I got on and off buses. I learned how to drive. I was the first disabled person to lead Israel tour. I was the first disabled person to lead Israel tour twice. I, <laughs> early in my 20s, I conquered what I think of as my Everest when I uh, learned how to do escalators. Stairs that move, not the uh, choice of transport for your average crutch user. And throughout that, I also had to recognize that there would be things that I wouldn't be able to do. I showed no interest in ice skating. <laughs> but we were having a baby, and that was brilliant. And now I needed to know how I, or would I be able to push a, a baby around our, our flat? Would I be able to get the baby in and out of the cot? Would I be able to get a baby in and out of the bath? Would I be able to get my baby to the car, would I be able to push a buggy? The answers to these questions would determine whether I was going to be able to left, be left alone with my baby or not. It mattered. So we looked, we, looked for, we looked for advice, we looked for help. And if you're not on the system, it's quite hard to find that advice. But we managed it and we organized a meeting. And in our flat one day, there was a social worker, let's call him Brian, it was an OT, Let's call her Helen. Um, and my wife, let's call her Sarah. It's just easier. <laughs> and I thought everybody understood why we were there, but Brian, Brian did disappoint. And he, he got out the biggest form in the world. I, I don't like forms. And he, he, he went, can you do personal hygiene? It's okay. <laughs> Shower. You do toilet. And I, well, Brian, this isn't really about what I can do. I can do all these things. This is about what's coming up right down the road in the future. This is, that's what it's about. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I do understand. Yes, yes. Can you cook? I'm not, <laughs> not great, Brian, no. Anyway, my children will be at university before Brian comes up with anything constructive. Uh, but Helen was great. Helen was proactive. She was positive. It turned out she was also pregnant, which was very helpful. And through her and some other people and some help and advice, we came up with some plans. So when Joseph, my uh, son, our son was born, we had some idea what we were doing. And one of the things we had was a, a tray uh, on four big wheels, a bucket tray with enough depth to it to put stuff in. And what I put in it was a changing mat and a baby. And... <laughs> 
can push a baby, actually quite quickly, you can push a baby <laughs> <laughs> round, round the flat, and they do, they do quite enjoy it. Um, so that was, that was helpful. Um, and I also got a much more high-tech thing, which was a, a chair molded exactly to my shape, made exactly for me, which went around me without my legs on, and it elevates, and it tips, tipped 45 degrees. Why do you want... Why would you want a chair that can tip as far as that? Well, I'm quite good at balancing out of my legs. I've been doing it for a long time. I might fall over now, but generally I'm doing it quite a long time. And you can hold, I hold on to whatever chair or ledge I'm on with one hand, and I reach for whatever coffee cup or bag, um, tin of beans with the other. The recommendation when you're getting a baby out of the cot <laughs> is to use two hands. Um, so this allowed me to do that, very helpful. There were things that didn't work out. I never quite succeeded in pushing a buggy. I did it for a very, very short distance. It was, uh, wasn't, wasn't something I was able to do. And when you're out and you're on your artificial legs and your child is reaching up to you, as all children do, to be picked up, and you can't do that, that's quite hard um, to, to see. But I think the, the biggest success I had, the biggest physical success I had, was the day um, a few months down the line when I did get my son to the car by myself. At that time, we lived in a flat, and the flat had a long driveway to the car, and my faithful bucket tray, I put Joseph in the bucket tray, put the car keys in there with him, he wouldn't swallow those, and then I pushed him, pushed him, along, pushed him along the driveway, um, out of my legs, got to the front passenger seat, got in the back side, um, opened up the front, didn't knock him out, pulled him through, put him in the front seat, pulled the bucket tray in with him, gonna need that later, got into the back, pulled him into the back, put him in the baby car seat, wrestled the straps, third or fourth time, managed to get that to work. Got out of the car, locked the car, told him to be out as quick as I could, ran back to the house, got in my legs, got the rucksack full of baby accessories, and walked to the car and got in the car. Sometimes the preamble trip to the trip was longer than the trip, but it was still just about worth it. <laughs> Fast forward to now, and now I've got two children. Uh, Maggie is our youngest, she's, she's now three, and sometimes we're out and about, just the two of us, and we come to roads. Now, you'll be used to going crossing roads with children. It's the most natural thing in the world. You reach out, you grab them by the hand. I can't do that. So how do I get around that? Well, I use a combination of paranoia and <laughs> sports commentary. So uh, Maggie, standing, standing, standing by the road, stand next to Daddy, stand next to Daddy, stand next to Daddy, car coming, there's a car coming, coming, car, 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 there's a van, there's a van, there's a van, there's a van. Cyclist, cyclist, right, right, half the cyclists, we're going, we're going halfway, 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 it's clear, it's clear, Maggie, to the pavement, to the pavement. Sometimes I think I look more special needs than I need to. <laughs> but that works. Now, if you know children, you know they can be quite unpleasant. And I, I'm going through things now that I've already been through which is quite strange. I'm going through things that I've already been through as a child, children making comments, children asking questions, pointing, and, and having to handle some of that. Some of it I handled well, not all of it, some of it. And um, now, as a, as a parent of a six-year-old and a three-year-old, I'm getting those comments and I'm getting those questions. And I, Sometimes I think to myself, well, I'm not an educator. I'm not here for you. I'm here to look after my children. I'm not, I don't even know your names. Anyway, um, the best example of of that, I think, is soft play. If you know soft play, you know there's nothing soft about it. It's, it's, it's hard, it's brutal, it's like warfare out there. And Joseph, when he was younger, he used to absolutely love me coming in um, into soft play with him, uh, out of my legs, and crawling around. It's great for him. One of the big positives is to have an adult on your physical level, something that an able-bodied parent or parent with legs is not able to give. And we crawled around, all, all around, and this 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 kid just would not leave us alone. It was uh, coming up to us and for about 10 minutes or so. And then I noticed he had a Spider-Man toy. So I said, oh, you like Spider-Man? Yes, I love Spider-Man. I'm going to be like Spider-Man. I'm going to fly. Now, I'm the mature adult, and I've been successful in changing the conversation. So I, I should have left it there. But Spider-Man can't fly. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. No, no, Spider-Man Spider -Man can't fly. Yes, he can. Spider-Man quite clearly uses web slingers to swing through high-rise built-up areas. And now I'm an educator. <laughs> 
I started this by making an assumption about parenting, and I'm going to make another one. And that is that I think everybody here who's a parent just wants what's best for their children. And it wasn't until being asked to do this talk that I thought, what, if anything, do I want my children to take away from the fact that I am disabled? And I've come up with three things um, that I think does, does, does matter to me. The first is that I want them to know it's okay to be different. In fact, it's actually quite good to be different. The second is that I, do, I also want them to know that it's okay to not be able to do everything. Nobody can do everything. I am not a professional ice skater. <laughs> and finally, and I don't think this is a contradiction, I want them to know that when it's important, when it really matters, you can make it work.